So, at one point, you left Jackson Records? Yeah, we left Jackson Records and went back home. Well, why is that? Uh, they wanted Joe to retire. I said, you know, it was over. Joe was getting too old. Joe would come to me and say, New, I've done what I could do for you. You're on your, you're on your own now. And you met a lot of people through me. And let me see you handling your business. Okay. And that's what I did. But when I went back to San Francisco, I got in trouble. I had a brother-in-law who put me in jail, had me put in jail, because he's trying to get me to become an informant on my family. Even though I wasn't in, in it no more, they knew I knew some things, and he was trying to, the brother-in-law was trying to get me, to, and, a, and a cousin that was a cop trying to get me to tell on my family I wouldn't do it. So they set me up with a shotgun in a garage with a friend of mine, and uh, some of that bunky shit in Empire set me up, and I went to prison, and I had to escape. And I had to escape because when I went to prison, Lou Sides from MCA Records told my wife that I, I want to sign the new charms, but I need the daddy. And so when my wife came and told me that they needed me, I broke out of, I broke out of Susanville. Right, you broke camp. out of prison to sign a, a record deal. Right, a Susanville camp, yeah. For the Neutrons. Right. Uh, how many times you, have you been shot altogether? I shot myself, and I've been shot one time. That's it? That's it. And, uh, and the cop shot me years ago in the ass. <laughs> in the ass? Yeah. Okay, but see, it's not like you've been... And, 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 and a ton of shots, no, and a ton of shootouts. Uh, 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 stabbed? No. Never stabbed. Uh -uh. Okay. So you break out of prison mm -hmm. to sign a record deal. And you know who broke me out, right? Who's that? My, my mother, my, 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 my cookie broke me out. China Doll, her and the kids. China Doll is? That's Jay Valentine, the new child's mother. Mother, okay. Yeah. She broke you out of prison. Right. You went and signed a deal. Right. And then what, you turned yourself in? Nope. I stayed out for two years and ran under Johnny Cochran's name and Joe Jackson's. Okay. They were trying to get me a deal, uh, cut a deal where I could go back and they let me out because they, they knew that the shotgun I got set up with was not my shotgun and they were setting me up and Joe ran into it and Joe called Johnny Cochran and Johnny Cochran was trying to get me a reprieve and a new trial. Okay. So your kids signed to MCA. Right. You go back to jail? Uh, two years later. Two years later, you yeah. go back to jail. Um, but then there were some problems that happened with MCA Records where... Well, let me tell you what. And the, and the reason why I stayed out for two years is because Johnny Cochran was so powerful that when the police pulled me over, I, I was using my brother's ID, but they knew that wasn't my ID. In some kind of way, they like just let me go on about my business. And where I hid out was in Encino. But Miss Jackson and them didn't know I was a wanted man. But I used to be at their house. Right. Mr. Jackson, didn't, they didn't know I had broke out of prison. They okay. just thought I was down on my luck back in L.A. Okay. Now, but there was a point when MCA Records and the Neutrons, that the relationship stopped working. Stopped working because Teddy Riley and New Edition got into a shootout on the road in New York. T and Teddy Riley and New Edition got into a shootout? No, they got into a fight. A fight. And the bodyguards got into a shootout and one okay. of the bodyguards got killed. Okay. So then what happened to the Neutrons? Uh, I got a phone call saying, Ron Newt, we got to put them neutrons on the burner right now, on the back burner, and we got to do new addition, uh, break them up to Ralph Chesman, Johnny Gill, B and BBD. BBD, Bellevue of DeVoe. Bellevue of DeVoe. I said, huh? Bo Bobby Brown, too. Bobby Brown, no, Bobby Brown wasn't around then. Oh, he wasn't. But they had Bobby Brown. Yeah. Right, and they said they had to put money behind him, and they didn't have enough money allocated that year for, for my kids. Now they had to take out my money that they had allocated for my kids and give it to uh, new Edition and all them because Al Heyman had kicked them off the tour, okay. so they had to all go and for themselves. New Edition was a huge group back right, then, right. To, to, you know, to be fair. Right. And the Neutrons were still right, right, just coming growing, up. Right, right. Yeah, still growing. But I wasn't going for it. Right. So uh, uh, when they told me, uh, I said, well, I got my own money because I just got a, almost a million dollars from the MCA. So I said, I got my own money. I'll take them out on the road. And Lou said, you can't do that, man. I said, I'm going to do it. So I went, me and the two dogs, uh, my two dogs, Lynn and the kids, August was the BBA, and uh, Pee Wee was the little dog that you put in your purse. What you call them dogs? Chihuahua? Ch no, or the other one with the hair, like a poodle. Yorkshire. Um, Pomeranian? The Yorkshire. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's what it was with Jay's dog. So we all on the road, we're doing shows 
for out there about six months. We we going from here to New York all the way back to L.A. So when we, every time I went somewhere, we turned it out. We had no records in the stores for the kids to go buy. So I called Lou Sizz on the phone. I said, Lou, what's happening, man? He said, MCA put the hammer down. They said they ain't putting no out there. They told you not to go out there. I said, I'll tell you what. Y'all be there when I get back. So he said, what you mean by that? I said, just be there when I get back. You heard me? So uh, Lou Sizz, so I started threatening all, you know, they always got somebody in every city, a representative to take you around, right? So I would start scaring all the representatives. So they called back and said, Ron Nunes, he on one. He coming back to do some damage, right? So when I got to uh, Baltimore, Maryland, going across the Fort McHenry Bridge in the camper, they pulled me on, wop, 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 wop. Get out, don't move. Keep your hands on the steering wheel. So they pull up and say, so I handed my brother's driver's license, right? He said, uh-uh, Ronnie, this is the end of the road for you. I said, huh? He said, someone gave us, that uh, told us he was out here with some kids. So they come on the bus right now, the gun is in the back. So they get the gun, and uh, my brother was doing the bodyguard in Indianapolis, Indiana, and he left the gun on the, on, the, on the camper. So my wife said, they said, Ronnie, you're under arrest for a uh, fugitive and gun charges, and you're going to probably get life now. I said, oh, Lord, the kids said, oh, Mom, you got to take that. You got to take that right now. So what happened? If my wife took the case, she got out, bailed out. No, she went to jail, bailed out, and then she came back to go to court with me. And the judge said, Mr. New, where have you been for two years <laughs> as a fugitive? I said, ma'am, ma I've been seeing, doing, say to know the drugs all the way from here, California to New York, to Baltimore, Maryland. So I was in the Baltimore, Maryland, jailing, right? She said, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. If they say you did good in Plainsville, New York, I'm going to let you bail out. Will you go back to California? I said, yes, ma'am. Because who lets a fugitive bail out already serving time? Yeah. So uh, I go back. She said, come back this afternoon at 2.30. So I go back to the jail, right? And they had rats in, that, in, in Baltimore jail so big, it, it bigger than cats, right? Dare you to eat your own food. I got on my knees. I said, Lord, I'm, I, know I'm a, I know I think I'm tough, but I don't think I'm this tough this day. I cannot do this Baltimore, Baltimore Maryland jail. Would you please let the judge let me go home? And when I went back, my wife showed the album, the Neutron's album, because it was on BET at the time I went to prison, I mean to uh, the jail in Baltimore, Maryland. So what happened was, the judge said, okay, Mr. New, can you post a $100,000 bill? I said, yes, I can, Your Honor. So I gave, my wife, my wife gave the bondsman 10000 I bailed out. Now, mind you, now I'm going back to get the camera, the, uh, the camper, and the MCA finds out, and they call and say, why did you let him go? So my friend Sharon, who came and brought the money to get us out, she said, Ron, when we went to get the camper, the feds is up there, and they want you to come up and we ask where you was, and we told them we didn't know. She said, you better go. So we're in the bells I'm in the bells of the car with the key, right? So I drive to Washington from Baltimore, Maryland, to Washington Airport. So I call, and they, I call Sharon called me and said, Ron, I called her mom, I said, what's going on? They said, they got land and they won't let her go till you turn yourself in. I said, I ain't turning myself in. I'll see them when I see them. And she said, well, the feds said call them. So I called Roy Cheeks of uh, the Baltimore, Maryland Federal Agent Department. I, see, I said, yes, uh, is this Roy Cheeks? He said, yes, it is. Is this Ronnie? I said, yeah. He said, come on in. We're going to forfeit your bill. I said, you ain't going to forfeit my bill. I'm going home. He said, you're going to leave your wife? I said, I'll see you when I see you, partner. Come get me, because I'm going back home to turn myself in. I'm not going to be turning myself way out, in, way out here. No, absolutely not. He said, where are you? I said, I'm not going to tell you where I'm at. I'm on my way home, buddy. So uh, I, I flew back to uh, uh, LAX, and this, uh, one of my uh, ex bras picked me up. Frankie Curley picked me up and uh, uh, took me to the house. And then a couple of days later, the kids flew in with their mom, and they all came in, right? Now I'm on the, then I get on the phone, I say, showdown at OK Corral today at MCA Records. So I get on the phone, I say, Lou Silas, let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something, nigga. I told you don't fuck me. Didn't I tell you don't fuck me, nigga? Didn't I tell you that? He said, Ron, man, man, what, what? He said, you out? I said, I'm out, nigga. I'm on my way to see y'all about my contract, and I want my contract back and my money. I want to pay out the contract, and I want everything. And I'm not playing. So I strapped up what they say. What they say I came with a hand grenade and an Uzi. Hand grenade. That's what they say. That's what they say. That's what they say. I take the I've never even heard of this. I never heard of someone showing up with a hand grenade. That's what, uh, well, that's what they said. That's what they said. That's what they said. And you can I neither confirm nor deny that. I'm not going to confirm it or deny it. Okay. So when I get up there, I jump up on the table. I say, uh, everybody get down. 
uh, uh, I said, everybody get on the floor. Don't nobody move, nobody get hurt. So somebody got on the phone and called a leader of a gang. I ain't gonna say his name, but they right. called a leader of a gang. And he called me and said, man, get up out of there, cuz. I need to holler at you. So I said, where you at? He said, come holler at me, cuz. You know I love you. So I went and he said, and he said, Ryan, you know they're my folks. I said, yeah, dude, but they doing me wrong. And one of the dudes looked at me and said, Ryan New, you escaped from Susanville, right? Oh, yeah, you're supposed to be a part of some such and such and such and such, right? I said, yeah, I'm a part of He said, dude, we, we ain't in that. Let that go. And so he called dude. said, check this dude. I, don't, I ain't in that shit. Hell in your business. He told me, Ron, don't go back up there. I said, I got to go back. I got to see what they're going to do about my kids. He said, Ron, you want me to go with you? I said, no, you ain't got to go with me. You know, I did the fake cry on him. So I went back up there. And when I walked back in the, uh, on the building, there were no security that guards at that time. But there was after that. I heard they spent millions of dollars after that. So <laughs> when I get up to the third floor, uh, uh, SWAT was waiting on me. Lock your feet together on your knees, nigga. Don't bite. If, you, if you move, you're going to blow your motherfucking head off. So uh, as he said, if you got any gang members out there on the roof or anywhere surrounding the building, we're going to kill all you and kill you first. I said, man, I ain't got no gang members with me. And I ain't got, see, I, I didn't go back with no, no Uzi and no such as, I was clean when I went back because okay. I was already pre-warned, right? And I had parked the car like eight blocks down the street. So they didn't know where the car was. And my kids said, we came, we, we got a ride and dropped off. So the, my kids, Jay and them said, y'all might well put the cuffs on us too because we're going with our dad. So they took him down to the police station and held him, and uh, my wife had to come get them, and that's what happened. That's what happened. And they made the news that night. Ron Newt uh, uh, ran up in MCA Records with the hand grenade and a, and a, and a, and a uh, Mini 14 and uh, laid everybody down. Yeah, his father, woo woo woo, uh, the father's so, gone now. Right. Yeah. I'm sure MCA Records let you out of the contract at that point. I Absolutely. Don't, I don't think they wanted Ron. No, they didn't. They kept it going until go. Ronnie got killed. <laughs> my son got son. killed. No, they no, they didn't let they didn't they didn't cut the contract because they was gonna still do them. They was had studio work. They was in the studio studio with Wookie uh, Stewart and Timmy Gallon, and Teddy Riley was getting ready to do something on them. So they okay. kept them for a while. My son was supposed to go to the studio that day. He didn't go because they canceled the studio. He went out out with the Crips and got himself got his head blew off. His it back his head. They shot him in the back of his ear. Yeah. Rest in peace. Right, rest in peace, Ronnie. And I've seen it on national TV when I was fighting my federal case for the same gun charge. Okay, so that's quite a history in, in the music business mm -hmm. as well as the street business mm -hmm. and everything else like that. Now, at one point, now you wrote a book about all this. I wrote a book called Bigger Than Big. I was going to call it Empire at first. I mean, Empire is in my book about five or six times. Okay. If you want me to show you, I can show you. Right. But I wrote a book called Bigger Than Big. And I can tell you the synopsis in like two minutes if you want to hear it. Well, the synopsis, I guess, is very similar to a, a TV show. In this story, I take you on a journey into the darkness, most dangerous, secret parts of the world, a pimp, hoes, drug dealers, and killers. I lay out my life and thoughts as against the pimp. The reason for this story is to educate you on the rights and wrongs of life. I educate you to the depths of the ups and downs of the music world. I regret it's totally impossible for me to real count on my counsel as a gangster, and fortunately it would take a lifetime. But this story would still show my remorse and I'm sorry for the many hearts I broke. But in the end, I would reap what I sold. This story is based on the trials and tribulations of one man who dreamed of living the richest of lives. Ron Newt, a.k.a. Prince Diamond, had everything he could dream of and the world had to offer. 17 hoes, a gorgeous wife, and 27 beautiful children. I was a self-made millionaire. I was a ghetto star. I was able to infiltrate and hang with the world's greatest superstar, such as Michael Jackson, Joe Jackson, and the rest of the Jackson family sliding the family stone. In August, 89, I landed on an $8 million record deal with MCA Records for my kids, the Neutrons. But although I thought I had it made, so my past would come back to haunt me and drag me down to nothing. It brought death to my namesake, Ronnie New Jr., who was gunned down at 1 p.m. on the afternoon of May 1st, 1991 in San Bernardino, California, for attempting to rob a Korean grocery store so that he could be initiate, initiated to one of America's most powerful gangs, the L.A. Crips. You see, Ron Jr. wanted to be like Ron Sr. Ron Sr. was bigger than big. I drove Rolls Royces, had a mansion in three, four cities on exotic animals like monkeys and black panthers. You see, Ron Sr. was dazzled by the worldly pleasure, but when the game was over, what proved to be too costly. All that glitter is not gold. You reap what you sow. The real empire. Now, you had a meeting with Terrence Howard at the Four yes, Seasons. Yes, at the Four Seasons Hotel. Uh, how long before uh, Empire premiered did you actually have this meeting? About two years before uh, Empire premiered, around 13, okay. between around 13 and 12. Okay. Somewhere around in there. I want to. I don't. I, I just don't completely recollect. But Suge Knight was there. Uh, King Cisco was there. Ronnie Marcet was there. A.W. was there. 
Tony po Topaz was there and Diego was there. And the one Armenian guy who in introduced uh, Terrence Howard to uh, the other uh, Armenian uh, Syrian guy, mm -hmm. King Sisko, and they got me, got me a sit down with Terrence Howard for like uh, three hours. And what did you guys talk Two to about? Three and a half hours. My story, I, like I just shot at you, what I just said to okay. him, like I did Jamie uh, Foxx. I said in the story, I'll take you on the journey, and Jamie slid down for him, tell me more. Well, I did that to Terrence Howard. He said, man, I gotta play you, man. I gotta play you. And then uh, he said, man, take my manager Julie's number down. My manager, take her number down and talk to her. See if we can get, I'm gonna help you see if we get a budget. We're gonna do this. So I get a script, a uh, book, and a DVD. Okay. But the, the meeting with Terrence Howard, you were telling him your life story. My life story. And he said it was and, the and coldest life story he ever heard in his life. And what did he say he was gonna do? He said he was gonna play me. He wanted to play me. Okay. Did anything happen after that meeting? Nothing happened. I never heard from him. Keith Sisko called the manager. But they never did get back at him because they already had what they needed to do the dirt they did, I guess. Okay. Two years later, Empire comes out. Yeah, two years later, Empire comes out. I'm riding in my Maserati. You know, my still, I'm still having it. So I'm riding in my Maserati. Uh, one of the Mayweather cars I bought from one of the money team boys. Uh, and uh, I'm riding in the Maserati. And his father called me and said, Ron, why you didn't tell me you got that money from... Uh, Fox. I said, tell you what money I got from Fox. That's how you got the Maserati. I said, I ain't got no Maserati that way. What is you talking about? Fox ain't gave me a dime. He said, I said, well, who's playing? He said, Terrence Howard. I said, Terrence Howard? He said, you get on demand? I said, yeah. I said, let me call my daughter. I said, channel it all. She said, what, Dad? I said, you seen the power? She said, oh, Lord, I didn't want to tell you. Yeah, I seen it. Come on home so I can set it up. I can record it. I got it for you. I said, channel it all. Why you didn't tell me? She said, Dad, I don't want you to get in no trouble. So I'm watching the Empire, right? And I see Cookie acting like my wife. I see Terrence dressing like me. Uh, uh, he mimicked me, the whole everything, right? I was like, wow. And they doing things in it that's in my book, my script, and my DVD. Everything fits. Okay. So did you try to reach out to them, or did you go straight to the courts? I went straight to the courts. I wouldn't go. What well, if I reach out? My reaching out is different, huh? You know, you say the yeah. wrong thing, and we, we then I wouldn't get no fight, fight nobody. I ain't okay. trying to go to prison, or get the electric chair or nothing. So you filed how big of a lawsuit? A billion dollars. A billion dollar lawsuit. Right. And against who? Against Rupert Murdoch, Terrence Howard. And Rupert Murdoch is the owner of Fox. Right. Fox, Rupert Murdoch, yep. Terrence Howard, Lee Daniels, the, the director. Danny Strong, and Malcolm Spellman from Oakland, where I'm out the bay. So they were always all in cahoots. Okay, so you. I don't put it on. I wouldn't say Rufus was Murdoch was, but he took it. He should have checked to see the was it copyrighted or how long it been out there right. or who 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 is this guy? Guy, because you if you come up with an idea like me and you was doing some going to do something with BET, right? Yeah. On American Gangster, we got it, but they shut us down. They right. shut down right before it was our turn. Right. So you had already be the same if you would have took my story and left me. Right. Because I gave you the same thing. Pretty much, Am I yeah, right? I, yeah, I didn't do nothing with it. Right, but I gave it to you. Yeah. I hope you did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so, how long ago did you file the lawsuit? I filed it in April last year. April of 2015. Right. Now, what happened recently in court? I've been to court. They tried to dismiss three times already, and the judge said, no, nah, we're not doing it. I didn't have the copyright papers uh, filed yet, and the judge said, I'm going to give you some time to get your copyright things together. So, I got all the copyrights now, and the last time I went, uh, my lawyer told him, Oh, uh, I got some copyright, but I don't think they said printed material. And I don't think the script been material. And I hollered in the courtroom and said, hold on, man. It's been. And the judge said, okay. She knew it was me. She said, okay, now. I'm going to have you removed from my court. She didn't say my name, so I just shut up. But I had to let her know I got it, right? So she didn't dismiss it. She just said, everybody come with a brief. They're doing a brief tomorrow on the 26th. We're coming one on the 2nd. And then she's going to make her decision if, she gonna, if we're going to carry on with it. But she gave me the court dates and the, the uh, status coming for settlement and all those dates for, next okay. year, for this year. So the court case is going forward? Yeah, it went forward. It's going forward right now. Okay. Did, uh, did any of the people that you're suing offer you uh, a settlement? Uh, let me say this. I don't know if it was a, uh, a guy came to me. And I think it was a host, like a dude playing on the radio, Jay King's radio, like he was Terrence Howard. And then Terrence Howard was supposed to call me. I got the, I got the, uh, the um, DVD with Terrence Howard talking to me. But some people say it ain't Terrence Howard. So it was on the radio station, uh, 
uh, cussing at each other, talking crazy. <laughs> and Terrence Howard, the supposedly Terrence Howard said, Denzel told me to whoop your ass. I said, you tell Denzel he come with my ass. And if you put your hands on me, nigga, I'm going to gun your bitch ass down, nigga. I ain't that dude. I'm telling you now, nigga, I play real hardball, so freeze that shit, nigga. Put it on freeze if you are the real Terrence Howard. Because if you hit me, nigga, I'm going to down you. The police might will come and put handcuffs on me. Okay. So you have a billion-dollar lawsuit. Right. That basically you, you feel that there are so many similarities between Empire Right. In your story. Right. That is just. Right. It's not Four true. drug dealers killed. Uh, Cookie wearing a hat. Uh, he's standing up at the round table, like I got the round table. She comes in in the lingerie. I got the girl laying on the lingerie table. Empire's in my book four or five times. The Roaring Lion is in my book. Uh, the Lion Roars. I said that when I escaped that night, the mine lions were roaring. So that's similar. Cookie mentioned San Francisco in Empire. They mentioned Hunters Point, where I'm from in Empire. Sean Johnson is supposed to be like me. He, he, he got people doing stuff from Hunters Point all the way to New York and Chicago and all that. That's in my book, all that stuff. Oh, Everything, that stuff. All, all that dialogue is up in there. All right. And they got a part in there where uh, 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 when he shoots Bunky, I got a part where I supposed to dead, kill a dude named Fast Eddie in my book, and I said, Cuz, I love you like a brother and tighten on the trigger. Bang. That's the only thing he said. I, we were friends for, since we were 14. And uh, bang. So that's similarities. Squeezing it because it got to have in their script, they're scripted. Uh, he's pulling a gun out of his pocket and getting ready to fire. Same thing. That's description. Where did you get that from? Where did you get the four drug dealers from? Where did you get, you know where you got Lucius Lyon from? You know where you got the line? Okay. Everybody always said I was the devil in the book, right? And even that Lee Daniels said my book was too graphic and too violent. It was too serious. So I figured they got the line where China Dog got bit by my line. Right. And I figured they got Lucius. Lucius is the devil, Lucifer. So I figured they were using, you know, they were depicting. If I'm a creator and I know how to create something, I could take and create American Gangster and steal from that. And you know I stole from it. But I know how to chip it up and cut it up. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know that these trials take a while, so it'll probably be a couple of years before it goes all the way well, through. Well, I don't know about that, but I can stand. I got a, uh, a big show coming up. I already, got a, I already got a show out of the deal. I already been shooting. As you can see, the lights in here, well, this house is already set up for lighting. Right. The lighting is already in the house. I won't tell you what, who's got the TV station because I'm not allowed to, but if you see the lighting in this $2 million house. I'm, this is empire shit. All this furniture is mine. I bought this with my money, my own legal money that I got for the deal that I got for this reality show coming. Well, that's what it is. Yeah, so. that's what it is. It's five sturdy. I'm living like empire for real. <laughs> Two fancy cars in the garage mine and a Maserati out front. Yep. Lee Daniels. I ain't Holly, uh, uh, Shaw partner. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, and you said my kids was... So the pop kids, take that back. They've been on BET Soul Train. Get my DVD bigger than big, like you already probably got it, because you want the world to think that I'm, I'm, I'm a sneezy cat. I'm just looking for something. Dude, I'm looking for what, what belongs to me, partner. That's all. And if you think you didn't take it, come to court and prove it. Right. Yeah, that's all you got to do. I ain't mad at y'all. Y'all did me a favor. Thank you so much to Lee Daniels, Terrence Howard, Michael Spellman, and, and, and Danny Strong. Thank you so much. Because when I depo you, I want to see what you come up and tell everybody how you came up with some gangster shit. Ain't none of y'all ever been real gangsters. Stop that shit and take it home and put it to bed. That's a uh, uh, promo shot of Empire in the second season. I guess they didn't give a damn after I sued, started suing, so they went and got my DVD and copied the line to me sitting next to me, my line. Tiger. Tiger. Tag and line, same thing. I want you to go to ronnewtherealempire.com. I'm selling t-shirts, pictures of uh, me and Michael Jackson, audio book, book, DVD, all on sale. Um, come and see what I'm working with. See what the real empire was built on. Ron knew. Him kind of crying and me crying, so you know what I mean? It just, it was no more of the words. A couple of days later, they tell me he died. How did you feel when they 
Um, when they said that, I mean, did you know that he was gonna die with it? No. Nah. the tubes? No. No. Nah, no. Nah, nah. Uh uh. Give me a second. Now. To go through all you went through, and your end result is being killed in a drive-by affiliation is like is like way beyond the aspect of 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 because you could have been here and left a, a way better mark.